Hello, and welcome to the Get Lean and Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin. I'm a certified health coach, trainer, and author. And this podcast is for middle-aged men and women looking to optimize their health and get their bodies back to what it once was 10 to 15 years ago. I will give you simple, actionable items to get long-term sustainable results. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. All right, welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin. I hope you had a great weekend and happy Tuesday. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, hope you had a chance to listen to my interview with Brad Kearns. This was actually the fifth time I've had Brad on the podcast, and I have to say, this was the best. So if you haven't already, check it out. He is the podcast host of B-Rad Podcast. He was a professional triathlete back in the 80s, and we touched on his career, the importance of recovery, of zone one training. We talked about the problems with restricted dieting, the importance of muscle mass. We got into hormetic stressors and recovery and much, much more. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend listening to my interview with Brad Kearns. Now on today's micro podcast, I want to follow up from some of the stuff that I've talked about with Brad. And one of them was micro workouts. Uh, you, you've probably heard me talk about it throughout, I don't know, some of these episodes that I've had with your, either with individuals or on my own, I think it's something that everyone should look into, especially, you know, we're getting into the new year. If exercising is something that, you know, you haven't been doing, or maybe you're inconsistent with, I truly believe that if you can find a way to um, add in these micro workouts throughout the day, throughout the weeks and the months to come, they're going to make an impact on your health. Um, some of the advantages, obviously, the efficiency and the time saving uh, that it takes to do a micro workout versus, you know, going into a gym for an hour is, you know, it sort of takes the excuses out. I love that. Um, you know, obviously, the, you're, you're still going to get the positive benefits of working out, meaning you can build muscle. Uh, you're going to get the month, mental health benefits. Uh, you're going to stay consistent over a long period of time. Uh, and if you're living a busy life, uh, with kids and a job, um, you know, staying committed to micro workouts is is going to be the way they go. I believe uh, this was uh, something that I put into my program because I thought it was that beneficial, and it's been it's been working very well. Now you're probably thinking, well, what is a micro workout? Well, there's different interpretations of it. Um, one of them that became really famous back, gosh, in the day. And it's still talked about today uh, was Mike Menser's one set to failure sort of training system. He came out with a book. Gosh, I believe it was might have been in the 70s. Um, don't quote me on that, but you can look it up. I can put a link in the show notes for his book if you want to check it out. But his sort of one set to failure um, that he brought prominent back in the 70s. And it's just for him, it was a time efficient way to train, but he also it was a way that he increased strength and muscle mass. I mean, if you look at him, he's enormous. Um, so there are benefits to it. And you don't necessarily have to just go into the gym and do three to four sets of every exercise, um, you know, take an hour. You know, some people like to do that. I personally do like to. I've done one set to failure before. The thing about it is when you're doing one set, you got to really commit. <laughs> you got to really be um, just honed in. And I would say majority of people that go into the weight room don't really understand what it means to fail like with maximum intensity. And you, you have to really push if you're going to do it, uh, sort of that one set to failure um, workout. Now, there are safe ways to do it. Um, for example, I've talked about the X3 bar before. And the X3 bar was developed by Dr. John Jaquish. Uh, this is only one system, but you can do one set to failure workouts with that. And that's what he sort of promotes in his program um, and uh, where you do like sort of a push, pull and a legs day, um, or you can do a total body day, whatever type of workout you want to do. But he promotes doing this one set to failure where you literally cannot push the bar anymore. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. I know it, another way of doing a micro workout would be I've had him on the podcast. Maybe I'll get him back on. 
Craig Marker talks about, and he has an article on breaking muscle that was written a few years ago, but he talks about this hit versus hurt mentality. And to summarize the article, I'll actually, if you're, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll, I'll show it to you real quick. Here it is. Uh, Craig Marker hit versus hurt. And he talks about the history of hit. And I'm sure you've all heard about, um, Tabata workouts and how they sort of gotten famous where you do this, you know, 20 seconds on 10 second rest interval and for four minutes. And let me tell you, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. If you try doing that (laughs) and you really go out for those 20 seconds, there is no way you're recovering in 10 seconds with maximal effort. Uh, Let's just say you're doing a sprint or on a bike, like a rogue echo bike, which I love. Um, You're just going to burn out and it's causing what's really happening is you're just causing too much stress on the body. And Brad and I talked about that in the podcast is you have to find that fine line between you know, going hard, but also allowing yourself to recover and come back even better the next time. And so he talks about instead of this high intensity workouts, these Tabata workouts where you're giving yourself, you know, 10 to 20 seconds of rest when you're doing a 20 second interval, um, try high intensity repeat training. Okay. And you can do this on a separate day that you do your strength training. So let's say you do your strength training two, three times a week of, you know, one set to failure. 15 minute workout. And then you go and do um, another day, maybe once a week, I'd say. I don't think you need to do it a ton unless you're really training for something. Once, maybe twice a week, you do a high intensity repeat training workout. And what that is, and I'll put the article in the show notes, is essentially you are building this high intensity uh, program based on your recovery. So what it is, is you, you go intense for like the work duration is five to 15 seconds. That's it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a longer rest and the amount of rest could depend on the individual, but you want to make sure that you come back the next time with the same amount of effort. So, uh, intensity is key because you're only doing five to 15 seconds. I've done this on the rogue echo bike. It's a great platform to use it on. You could do it on a bike, a rowing machine. You could do it on a, you know, you could do sled pushes. You could do a um, even swim. You can snatch a kettlebell if you're maybe more experienced. But try it on a bike, maybe just to start out. If you if you can get sort of a heavy duty like an echo bike, um, that would be cool. Or if they have one in your gym, and you go for five to fifteen seconds, uh, and so you keep that work time short, allows for maximal effort and a quicker repeat performance. And then give yourself like 45 seconds, depending on, you know, how experienced you are, and then come back again. And you'll do that for, you know, let's just say on average, maybe around four to six times. Um, So like a sample workout would be hill sprints could be one way to do it. (laughs) I would say sprinting is not for everybody, but you could sprint, you know, for eight seconds as far as possible. And then, you know, measure that distance and try to push that and maintain that distance each time. So sprinting might be a little more complicated because you want to really make sure that your your effort is the same and the distance is the same every time. So you're, you're not fading as the workout goes on. So if you want to read more about it, I'll put a I'll put a link in the show notes for his breaking muscle article, hit versus hurt. Also you can look up my interview with Craig Marker. Maybe I'll try getting him back on. So those are, I I would say, are two great options for these micro workouts that sort of take the excuses out and allow you to be consistent over time. Try one set to failure. You can build muscle that way. Okay, you'll hear arguments both ways, but either way, it's better than doing nothing. And if you really hone in on that workout, that one set to failure, um, trust me, you'll you'll be you'll be cashed when you're done. Um, and I would say maybe trying a, some type of band system would be great if you're doing it in your basement. Um, and then on 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 a, on another day, you can try this high intensity repeat training, and I think that might be a good blueprint to um, to get going, you know, in the new year. So, if you have any questions regarding either one of these workouts, um, let me know. These are some of the things that I like to implement in my step ladder system program. Um, so, if you got questions regarding that, you can email me Brian at Brian Brian at Brian dot com, and um, I appreciate you listening. Uh, And I look forward to talking to you on Friday with another great interview. Have a great day. 
Thanks for listening to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I understand there are millions of other podcasts out there and you've chosen to listen to mine and I appreciate that. Check out the show notes at briangrin.com for everything that was mentioned in this episode. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend or family member that's looking to get their body back to what it once was. Thanks again and have a great day.